Thanks for listening to another life-transforming message from the team here at C3 Southwest Washington. To find out more about our church, visit c3swwa.com. So at, at this time, I just wanted to say again to all of you ladies, uh, happy Mother's Day. And I wanted to honor uh, Pastor Rowena, my wife, and one of our lead pastors as she comes to the platform this morning. And I did want to say... Come on. And, and I did want to say that as she, she comes, I, I know that there's some churches uh, that would uh, say it this way, pucker up at the moment where a woman steps up onto the platform because they misinterpret scripture. The Bible is very clear about women's roles in the church. And when you read the writings of Paul, there were so many women who were in leadership in the local church, prophetesses, prophesying a woman should be silent in church. Study the context of that. Um, the voice of mom and dad needs to be heard in the home. That's why there is a mom and dad. Yeah. And for years, I was part of an organization that really kind of treated women like they were second-class citizens, not in this house. Ladies, you're a first-class citizen in this house, amen? amen. And your children are first-class citizens in this house, <laughs> amen? We honor God's people. So give Pastor Rowena a big hand. She's got a great message she's gonna share. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. How are y'all? Good, good. Well, um, let's see. Thought you'd be standing, but you're not standing. That's okay. You may be seated. <laughs> That's all right. We're flexible. Um, but before I, I step into a message this morning, I just want to honor our creative team. They are the ones in the black shirts, T-shirts that are lurking in the corners, the dark shadows of the room sometimes, and they pull out this camera and then you look the other way. Because it's like, oh no, <laughs> this is my, or this is my good spot. Some of my grandkids, they do that. <laughs> they said, Titi, take my picture. So, um, but thank you, thank you, a creative team. I know sometimes you don't get all the recognition, but you look around this building, you look on our website, Everything, every moment, you have a way because God has given you that gifting, that talent. You've captured who we are. And every Sunday after church, I look forward so much to scroll through our pictures to see what moments that you captured that maybe were so quick that we missed with just our, our natural eye. But you captured them, and they are there forever. So thank you. Why don't we give our creative team an applause and just a big thank you. And um, again, happy Mother's Day. You, hopefully you'll hear that all day long. Um, it's special. I don't know why it's just one day of the year, right, ladies? Right. right. <laughs> I see moms back there saying, that's it. Preach it. Go ahead. Um, but there is a day, and today we're just, we hope that you just get spoiled. We will do our part as a church family to just love on you and let you know how special you are. And what's so cool about being a part of a church family is that you get help, mom. You get There are all kinds of mamas and grandmas around here that if you will allow us to be a part of your life, we'll help you out. You can pass the baby. We'll, we'll, if your kids are running down the hallway, we'll stop them. If they're hungry, we'll feed them. And, and let me tell you, the kids know who to go to when they're hungry. Okay, so, so it's great. That's the advantage of being part of a church family. And I want to show you a picture of my family in case you didn't know who they were. Look at these guys. Here, can you see them? I'll move over here so you can get a good picture of who they are. Look at them. Oh, Riley, I just love that. I love that. She is a mystery. But get ready. She, she's going to rock your world. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> um, but it's such an honor. It's such a, yeah, just a, a great time for me as a mom to have all my kids this morning as a family. We were, we've been able to serve together. And that was intentionally planned. That just didn't just happen. So today, my word to you is hopefully going to encourage not only mom and dad, not only challenge you, but challenge the church and what our role in that. Like uh, Steve said, we didn't do this on our own. It took an army. It took you. And I was thinking about this yesterday. 
I think my kids, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, are like the first generation that was, they weren't born here, but they grew up in this house. And you played a big part in who they are today. So these are the first ones. Uh, yeah. So there are more coming, as you saw this morning. So it's an exciting time, and we want our church to be a generational church. Our kids don't have to go anywhere. They can stay here in this house and be faithful here. Amen? Yes. Okay. You're welcome, Mom and Dad. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm just so proud because uh, our church has always been in our DNA. That is who we are. We are intentional about our interactions, our relationships with our kids, and that is called discipling. Yeah. So that is what we're going to talk about today. A disciple is a person who is a pupil or an adherent <laughs> of the doctrines of another a follower. And that's who we all are because we follow Jesus. And that's who our kids are. Whether they're children from even Riley's age, one to 18, that is our, those are our kids. Not just the little, the ones that left the room, but our students. And I don't know if you've noticed, but our students are, are hot. And what I mean, they are in it. They are here. I've got you know, Jocelyn back there with her headpiece on. We've got students up here leading us in worship. Our students are running the cameras. They're dancing. I mean, they're all over. We've got students back um, helping with our kids. They are all over. And again, that is a reflection of you. So thank you for being just open and obedient to that. Um, so there's a quote that I want to share with you. It's in the book, um, out of the book, Resilient child dis discipleship and fearless future of the church it reads these children we we love will be the church of 2050 they will need to be disciples as few modern generations before them have had to be they will need to have spine and heart spine to stand firm for christian beliefs in an increasingly hostile secular world and heart to embrace the same intolerant of faith world with a love that cannot be ignored. That is the generation that God has challenged us and has said, hey, they need you. If we as a church do not step in to disciple and be a part of their life, I don't know if the, the church might not be as strong as it needs to be. So buckle up, because I am going to give you <laughs> the, the few steps that I, we have taken. And as a church, I'm just going to present that challenge to you. And my prayer is that you will embrace it. And that will be continue to be who we are, right? Yes. yes. Scripture, uh, Matthew 28, 19, 20. It says, therefore, go and make disciples. Does it give an age there? No age. It says, go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That is, you know, Jesus had picked his followers. He was now going to heaven. His work here has been done. And he said, you know, all authority has been given to me. My job is done. It's your turn. And he said, you guys, go and make disciples. Bring followers and tell them about me so that they can do it. So that is, that is just what the commission that Jesus left for us. And so it doesn't matter what age they are. I, I, that's why I think I, I know I enjoy working with kids so much because they're so easy. You tell them something, okay. Oh, that, I mean, you hear my, my grandson? Woohoo! Did you hear him as he was leaving? The, how many of us do that when we go to God's house? Oh, no. Shh. I'm like, so I enjoy that because they are raw. They are who we wish we could be. When I, we see Isaac up here, I think he was doing the skater, Shane. I don't know if you saw him. 
But he was doing like this. He was worshiping. I said, oh, how many of us wish we look at him and we envy him? And we shouldn't have to. We should be up there with him. Let's go, Isaac. So, um, yeah. So, so being a disciple, doesn't matter the age, that is our commission. Um, and as I was thinking about, the, oh, why don't we go ahead and we're going to pray before I get into this because I'm going to show you something. Brought illustration, and I love it because I'm a very visual uh, learner. So I want to share that with you. Um, God, we just, I just thank you for your word today. God, I thank you for a day that has been set aside that we can just give extra love to our moms, to our ladies that invest in our kids. God, and I thank you for this house because there are women in here, young ladies, young teenagers that aren't moms, but yet they love on our kids. And I thank you for them. And I pray that this will always, always be a house that values the life of a child because you love them and you've given them to us. Let us be who you are for them. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, and, and you know, kind of been, I've been just thinking, been thinking of our culture. Um, there is a, another quote out of this book, uh, Resilient Child Discipleship. And it describes spiritual resilience as a quality that describes the spiritual elasticity of a child or adult. The resistant strength to bend and flex, but not break against the weight of culture. And that is, that is the area of importance. I said, God, you know, I just been thinking, because I know our last couple years have been crazy, right? Do you agree? Yeah. And, you know, decisions have been made and sin had just, I mean, the enemy has just come in and he just went crazy through people and just the culture of our time has, has really impacted our culture and has impacted our kids and families and what is being taught in school and what is being taught as the right way of living and the truth. And I said, God, how, how, what are, what is our role? And he showed me something and I want to share it with you. This little bit of clay here. And he said, you know, a child's life is like clay. This is how they come to us. They don't have any thought. All they know is they're hungry and tired, right? <laughs> That's all they know. Um, he said, but this is the life of a child. And there are influences, forces around them in our culture right now that are trying to mold because this, this child, because this clay is not made just to be put on the shelf. It has been produced for a purpose, to make something, to become something. And it was just weird. And what I, I saw was just, okay, here's the life of a child, but the outside forces, you've got social media. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. I didn't want to, I didn't practice because I didn't want to mess up the pretty clay. So we'll see how this goes, but I'm sure you'll get the picture, right? So the influences of, of friends, of culture, of social media, of uh, school, and the things that are going into schools, and that influence is strong. It's loud. And if that is all that they hear, and if that is the strongest voice, the strongest influence that they hear, that is what's going to form them. And I said, God, that, that can't be. <laughs> we cannot let the world, we cannot let the, the enemy, the, the lies form these kids because they deserve a truth. They deserve the chance to have the best life ever, right? I said, so then this is where we come in. This is where I come in, the voice of truth. The voice of, hey, you can do that. The voice of, I am with you. The voice of, hey, you did a great job. Even though, oh, man, that was not on tune. <laughs> but you did a great job. I am with you. I am praying for you that your voice gets so loud. And we, as a church, become the stronger force that this over here gets what? 
done. Because right now, I'm, from what, what I see and what I hear, this force over here is strong. But we as a church, we can't speak maybe for all the churches, but in this house, let us be that force. Let us be that strong force to make that down. I could probably stop right there, couldn't I? Visuals. I love them. I think that's too why I like working with kids. So we're going to use this in kids' church for something. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that was fun. That was good. Um, so in that and with that, what I want to, did I miss my title? I did. Well, the title is Intentional Disciple Maker, and that is who? You. Me. Us. Together. Um, so I'm going to just give you a few pointers. Being a discipling force in a child's life demands, and you might think, oh, I can't do that. You know, you know, before I start actually working with kids, they're intimidating. Do you think that? If you've never worked with a child before, there's, it's kind of scary. Because it's like, if I get rejected by a child, and that's bad. <laughs> and that, that had kind of been my, it's like, oh, I don't know. What am I going to talk to a kid with? What are we going to do? But all you do is have to sit there. When you say hi, that's all you have to do. And the kid Kids, whether it's a student, whether it's a child, they just want you to notice them. They just want you to say, hey, you're important. I'm going to sit right here, and I'm going to talk to you for a moment. So it's not, it's not that scary, but in case you're saying, oh, yes, you don't know. So I'm going to give you a couple tips as to how you can get started as being that influential disciple maker, that force in a child's life. Your first, first thing I'm going to just mention to you is developing a discipling relationship with them. And that is, that is pretty simple. It is not just seeing them running down the hallway, not just letting them pass you by, but actually maybe jumping in front of them and saying, hi, getting to, if it's a child, getting down at their level, looking them in the eye and say, hi, what's your name? Eldon, and then he takes off. But you've established, oh, and you say, yeah, my name is so-and-so. But you've established, you've greeted. So next time, you just build on that, and you build on it. If it's a student, ask them their name. Say, hey, what do you like to do? Do you have hobbies? Oh, there you go. I think they'll be able to share what they enjoy doing. Um, in, uh, let me just read you a quote out of the book that I, uh, The Resilient Child, it said, in March of 2015, Harvard's Center on the Developing Child released a study that stated every child who winds up doing well has had at least one stable and committed relationship with a supportive adult. In a recent study by Barna on youth who were classified as resilient disciples from the ages of 18 to 29. This is awesome. 77% reported, quote, when growing up, I had close personal friends who were adults from my church, parish, or faith community. And I think I, it's pretty safe to say, I think my kids fall into that category. They had a few little friends their age, peers, but the majority of their friends were adults. <laughs> and I, the influence that they made was evident today. So you as an adult, you play an important role in, the, in their life. Um, I know growing up, we, I grew up in a, um, like a mission church, just a, a Hispanic mission church, and so the teenagers, we didn't have a room. So my teacher, I remember her name, Charlotte Swasso. And we didn't have a classroom, but she, so she was creative. She brought her camper every Sunday morning. And she brought it, parked out front of the church. So every morning we got there, and if her camper was there, 
we knew she was here for us. And when it was time, we were released for Sunday school. We went in there. We were tight. But that was the fun part. We were all tight. And, we, and I can't remember the things that she taught us. But I remember she had a smile on her face every Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning, she was there with the Bible. And we laughed. And we were together. And I still remember that. And like I said, I, I don't remember what she taught. But I remember that she was there. And she was there because she loved us and she cared. Um, I know, and may Stevie can correct me if I am wrong, but gr uh, growing up, he, we had our pastor, Nick Higgins. And Nick Higgins gave Steve uh, guitar lessons. And this was the one thing, one time, I had no reminders. No, Stevie, get yourself ready. You got to go lesson. I mean, after school, we picked him up. And I don't even remember him practicing his lessons too much but he knew Tuesday after school I didn't even have to he got out of the car went in his room came back out with his guitar and ran to the church because we lived behind the church at the time because he knew that he was going to meet with Nick and he was going to give him a guitar lesson for an hour and so I don't even think it was about the lesson it was about that relationship so, if you are an adult here, your relationship with our kids is so important. Don't let them you know, run away from you. Don't let them intimidate you, but press in to who they are. Make an intentional um, relationship with them. Um, I'm going to tell the story, and I, I did clear this with Jen Davenport because it is a funny story, and it is a perfect example of what trust and relationship is. Um, we were in the sanctuary, maybe, or the auditorium, maybe a couple weeks ago, and I was uh, talking with, I think I was talking with Leslie here in the front, and Ben, my grandson, and Belden, her, Jen Davenport's youngest son, they were talking here on the side. And so after we got done, I looked down at Ben, and Ben was crying. And he, his ear, his, he had tears coming down his face. He was crying. I'm like, well, what happened? And I can't remember if he pointed. I think he did point. Somebody pointed. And I looked in the direction of what they were pointing at, and it was Belden. He was, he was on the other side of the auditorium walking down. But as he was walking, he was glancing back. And he, was, he wasn't running. He was walking slowly, glancing back. And I thought, huh, OK. And I was trying to ask Ben, Ben, what, what's? And he could not. He had tears. He just couldn't tell me what was happening. And so I sat there, and, we, and I saw Belden walking. And, and in a brief second, we made eye contact. And I said, OK, this is the moment. I, what do I do? <laughs> We're looking at each other. And all I did, I motioned. And I thought, oh, he's not going to come. He's going to run the other way. And what does he do? He turned around and he walked back to me. I'm like, oh, no, he's coming back. What do I do? I didn't expect him to come back. How do I handle this? I didn't see what happened, but something obviously happened. And so Belden, he, he got to where we were, and he didn't come directly, and he kind of at the side here, and I called him a little closer, and he's and I, just a little closer, and I said, Belden, I'm, I'm looking at Ben, and he's crying, and I'm trying to get him to tell me what happened, but he, he's not able to. Do you know what happened to him? And he looked at me and just, <laughs> I said, Really? I said, Ben, are you, and he couldn't. I said, Belden, are you sure anything? Do you see what happened? <laughs> I said, okay. I said, well, thank you for coming back. Um, you can go now. And he walked away. And I said, at that moment, you might, you might think, oh, it's a big deal. No, no, let me tell you. Belden, we greet each, I, I have been intentionally in my relationship with him. Every chance I get, I say hi to him. He's running all the time. I don't know if you've noticed it or not. <laughs> he might be climbing something. He might be running. But I stop him and I say, hi, Belden. How are you? Good. And there have been times when he's been gone and 
he's running past me, and then he comes back, and he gives me a hug. And then he keeps on running, and I make sure I tell mom. I said, Mom, guess what happened? And we connected. So that whole scenario happened because he trusted me, because he knew he was safe, and he said, hey, that is my friend and I can trust her. So I'm going to go back, even though something might have happened. I still don't know. I said, at that point, I don't even care. The fact that you came back, I'm just, and I was telling mom this story. I said, can I share it, please? She goes, yeah, okay. <laughs> go ahead. It has a good, a good uh, purpose. Go ahead and share. So may, get to know Belden. He, he is a joy. He is a joy. But again, relationship is key. Um, Another way of being, let me see what that was, uh, discipling force in a child's life is having discipling conversations with them. And what I mean by that is like you're interacting with them constantly. Um, I know there's a video, I don't know if you've seen it go through our Facebook feed, but there's a video that Leslie took of Ben. And we're at the hub, and Ben is sitting on a stool, and he is sitting at the, the board, the soundboard. And she has him there, and he, his job is to push the orange button. And I'm looking at that, and I said, like, oh, what if he pushes the wrong button? But he's on there, and he's looking at that button. There's no, he's looking. He's got himself. And I guess she must say, push the button. And he pushed it. And then he got himself situated again because he was ready. He was, I was on that. You know, that took courage on her part. That took risk. That was brave. <laughs> and, but she knew that for him to do that was going to be, he was so excited. And he did it. He did it. That little, that little, um, hey, you can do this. That interaction. Um, he did it. You know, over the last, you know, is it 10 years that we've been mobile? Our church has always included our kids in, in tearing down and, and setting up. It is nothing to see Mr. Corey have a kids roll the carpet up. And they'll tell you if you're not doing it right. You know, oh, no, that's not how you do it. Roll the carpet up, pulling the cords out of the sound systems, uh, tearing the tape off the floor, stacking chairs. It didn't matter. We had our youngest ones to our oldest teenagers tearing down um, our screens, putting the PVC piping together, putting the fabric over. It, we have always been a part. That has always been a part of who we are. The, um, in Luke 6.40, it says, The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. The, our, our kids will learn to serve in God's house if you will lead them. If you will take them by the hand and say, Hey, come and do this with me. As uh, Steve was saying today um, about leading them through worship, being that example. If we are praying that you are there praying and you say, hey, come and do this. Let's pray together. And so, and so that they can make disciples of those that follow behind them. Uh, and the third thing I want to share with you in being a discipling force in a child's life is leaning into a discipling prayer for them. Uh, and this is something I do every week. I've got my, my prayer journal. And Wednesday, just because it's the middle of the week, and I know the students, uh, my city meets on Wednesday. Woohoo! Yeah. On one side, I have all the students of my city. I have them listed here on my page. And every Wednesday... When it's my, my prayer time, I lift them up in prayer. And I thank God that I get to be a part of this. When I see them successful, when I see them taking a stretch forward, when I see good things happening, and maybe some bad challenge, not bad things, challenging things happening, I know that I am a part of their life, and I pray for them. Day, weekly, and I also have their leaders 
on my list because I know they need help. (laughs) I know they need strength. I know they need wisdom because they got teenagers who are changing one day to the next day, and they need God's wisdom. I also have different areas of ministry that our students are involved with, and I also have you, Mom and Dad, on my list because I know you need wisdom. I know you need strength as your students grow. And then when I turn my page, guess what? I have names of our kids. I have Isaac, and I'm even the little ones, Riley, Isabel. I have all their names, and I pray for them. And I pray that God guides them and leads them, and that they will be in this house, and that as a church family, that we will raise them together, and we'll get to share in their joys. We'll get to share in the laughter. We'll share in the tears. We'll be a support to their family, and just... Different, different things. And mom and dad, I pray for your name is on there too because we're doing this together as a church, as a church, a defining force. Prayer unlocks the impossible. We can only do so much. We can say, hi, hello, how are you? We can say, hey, come along, come and do this with me. Let me show you how. But prayer is that weapon that you and I have that does the impossible. So I, my hope is that you will, you will start something like this on a weekly basis. If you don't know their name, we'll get you their name. And we will pray together and watch God's blessing on their life. I have uh, something I just going to let them roll for you so that you can put a face to who you are called to disciple in this house. stand with me. C3, Church Family Southwest Washington. Those are the faces. Those are the the kids that God has given to us to raise, to instill, to to disciple. Developing a discipling relationship with them, having a discipling conversation or interaction with them, and leaning into a discipling prayer for them. I don't, I don't know if it's, it's possible to go back to that, um, my quote. If not, I'm just going to read it again. Because this is the quote I want to leave with you. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. These children we love will be the church of 2050. They will need to be disciples as few modern generations before them have had to be. They will need to have spine and heart, spine to stand firm for Christian beliefs in an increasingly hostile, secular world, and a heart to embrace that same intolerant of faith world with a love that can't be ignored. These are the kids. These are the kids that we need to help raise and to instill the truth of God. That we, our voice as a church family will be loud and strong because our kids, there is a battle for our kids. I don't know if if you're aware or not because if we don't fight, if we don't stand up and we take a, a role in their life, 
Somebody else will. They will listen to another. And God has placed them in our house to equip them to stand up when the forces around them are loud and strong and they don't know they're hearing this and that, that they can know, God, help me to know the truth. And that you and I have equipped them with that ability. That they won't have to go to the friend. They won't have to go to anybody else. But they will remember, hey, my church family told me this was coming. This is what needs to happen. And I am going to stand because they saw truth in you lived out. And that's what they want. So with me. Make it your, your, your something that you will embrace, something that you will look toward. Maybe it's never, ever been on even your radar till today. This is your opportunity to step in and know that our kids need you to be that discipling force in their life. Amen? All right, let it, let's just pray together. And if you want to take your hand over your heart as a, as a symbol of God, this is me. I want to do this. Then let's, let's do it together. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for our kids from infants, God, to 18-year-olds to who are embarking on a new journey. God, so many questions at that point of what to do, where to go, you know, how to be, life to live. But, Lord, this house is a place of safety. This house is a place that loves our kids. And that our kids, no matter what their age would be, that they would know that this is a place where they can come for answers. They can come for advice. God, that they will know that we will direct them the best way that possible. That we will stop and we will pray with them. Because sometimes that is what is required. That we will speak life and truth when we see a young person, a child that is just torn up inside. That we will look beyond our own abilities and look to that heart and love them and speak life and speak truth and declare your word over their life that the enemy does not have them. He cannot have our kids. And we we will fight. We will fight for them. So mom and dad, I don't know, grandma and grandpa, uncles and aunts, even if you don't have kids, this is our, our commission. He's given us these children. So let us take that stand together and let us just be involved in their lives and to love them and to laugh, to cry with them, to see God's blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our pastors, leaders, and what we do at C3 Church, visit our website at c3swwa.com.